Hi, I'm Mary McNamara. I'm a television critic at the Los Angeles Times, and I'm, I'm here with my colleague Robert Lloyd, who actually tried to speak for himself for a second. I was going to be like to tell the truth and go, I'm Mary McNamara. <laughs> And okay, that's an obscure critic. television reference. So we're here to talk about the 64th Emmys, which were last night, and which I reviewed in today's paper. I uh, gave it a, what would you say, a mixed review? I would say it's a mixed review. It picked up in the middle. What did you think? I thought it was, um, even by award standards, rather <laughs> dull. I thought that they were, uh, they never really got out from underneath the... Uh, so why do you think that was? Well, I think there's a few. Excellent. Let's uh, discuss them. I think that um, the part with that is a very big theater. It is a very big it's theater. Cavernous, and everything in it, I think, falls flat. You look, you know, every shot of the audience was like they went on for miles and miles and miles. Judge, there were these they, little people there, and even when there was just them and the camera, it just felt like there was never any kind of hey, we're all in a room together having fun. Right. They didn't like, look like they were having I assumed it was because they were so freaking hot because it was like 94 degrees on I the red carpet that. and then you got to add for just, you know, the collective heat of 70 million publicists and the flash bulbs and everything. Was so the air conditioning not working enough? I don't know, but I did feel like there was an enervation to the well, whole proceedings that Kimmel never was able to sort of like lift up and then the fact that Modern Family kept winning everything for the first hour was kind of a drag. Well, all yeah. of all of the uh, all of the film bits I thought were uh, ill conceived. Ill conceived. I thought the one with the Big Bang Theory introducing the CPAs was pretty funny. Some of the some of the ones with the, with the that's just because I really love yeah. Jim Parsons. Right. Some of those that some of the things of the writers, the little clippy things were, were good. Those are usually funny. Like it's always good on the Emmys when they, you know, the, traditionally they give the writers of the. Right. Of the uh, comedy, like right. the comedy shows. They let them talk. Movies. You but get the, to see them. But yes. the thing at the beginning with all of the women. That was weird. Kimmel. That movies. was weird. Mm-hmm. Although I have to say, I like seeing Kathy Bates break through a, you know, a door. Yes, yeah, but it was. She's so great. It was weird. weird. Yes, it and was. And then the. Uh, the uh, uh, the Brian bad Cranston. thing, <laughs> which, which Brian Cranston <laughs> seemed loath to even admit was going to happen. <laughs> When they were signing, <laughs> it was he was looking uncomfortable. Was not so good, and then Jimmy Kimmel's in memoriam tribute to himself. That was, was weird. Okay, so okay, okay, okay. So uh, probably not the best host yeah. that they've ever had. But, but I mean, he wasn't. He was. He just says it's a, it's, it's it's. I don't think it's easy to do. He's. I've never yeah. been a huge Jimmy Kimmel fan, but I can see that he's been coming on in his own little world, and he's really, you know, he's. He's but he's a his, deadpan kind of guy. His, right. I mean, his humor is very one-liner. It's very. It's like sort of like when David Letterman did the Oscar, and you're just like, you know, not all cameras are created equally, and something that plays very well Definitely. here does not play on the big stage. But let's talk about you, the shows. Let's talk about. I mean, because I thought one of the biggest problems was we just kept seeing the same people win who won last year or the year before, and I don't know how you get around that. Besides that, having a rule, well, that's an old, that's an <laughs> which old is communism, <laughs> exactly. it is, I will not be party to it. But um, well, isn't all voting a form of communism? Anyway? Okay, well, well, let's not um, get into that. But but uh, no, well, it, one, that's not a new thing with the Emmys. They always tend to go for the same people: John Lithgow, John Lithgow, John Lithgow. That's just, you know, there's. Why is that? Is it just like it's, habits? This is why it is. Okay. It's because Robert Lloyd answers it all. All voters, not all voters, most voters in any electorate are more lazy than not. And they tend to vote for things that they already know that they like without thinking too much about the alternative. Um, you heard it here first. Why there's only two parties in America. <laughs> people. Okay. Sorry. I didn't mean Nation. That. Why did Colbert not crazy. win? That's all. I mean, I was thrilled when Homeland won. Then the evening started looking up for me. When the Homeland writers won over the Mad Men writers who have like had a lock on that category for four, four years, right. it's like I was like, oh, something actually is changing now. And then when Homeland started winning, I was feeling really charged. And then John Stewart won again, and I was like, oh. I really felt like it was Colbert's year. Yeah, but Colbert, the problem with Colbert, not it's a problem, but I think in terms of voting, because you were you were asking this in our Sunday piece. That's which right, which is still available, is still available online. online. Uh, you were asking uh, about why, oh, why uh, uh, it's not happening, and I think it's because, though I didn't answer you in print, um, irony is 
is a weird thing. It's very difficult it to play irony, and the character that he plays is so. The irony, it's it's ironic irony. It's one thing on top of another, and it's difficult to to uh, pierce that in a way. Also, he is that show. It's right. really all him. And right. The whole time, whereas you know John Stewart has Samantha B come in and John Hodgman right. and this and that, and he's got a whole crew. That's true. Plus, he's on a half an hour earlier. On the other hand, I just feel like what he did with the Super PAC this year was just, I've never, I mean, that was performance art taken to a whole another level, but it was just, it was amazing. So, I mean, actually, there was a strangely, like, kind of political cast, I felt, to the second half, because you've had Homeland Win, which is a, one of the most overtly political show. I mean, Game of Thrones is certainly a political show. It's just not <laughs> in a recognizable nation. Yeah. But uh, but then you had Game Change won, which, of course, we knew Juliana Moore was going to win. But I was yeah. not as convinced that it was going to win in the you know in the best. What is it? What is that category now? Movie, movie miniseries, series, anything movie, that is not TV. a regular television series. Um, so that I thought was very you know, and uh, and the writer yeah. won and. You know, so that was they were definitely sending a message. I felt well in an election year, the two movies. political shows. I also think that people respond, and it's one of the reasons HBO makes these things. Uh, and they make, you know, HBO used to make a lot of TV movies that weren't about real things, and right. now it's almost all biopics. Right, and biopics. This really happened. There's a pre-sale element involved in that where people already know about the thing, so they get excited about. You, know, you can't right. get Sarah Palin into a, into your TV movie, right. but you can. <laughs> well, yes, and there's the also, player. and with the acting, there's also something that the viewer can judge. Right. I mean, they know what, and and it's true in movies too. I mean, the the biopics do very well at right. Oscar time too. I mean, right. it's like because we know that Philip Seymour Hoffman had to work very hard to appear as if he were Truman Capote. Juliana Moore had to. Partly, but it's also that you draft off the energy of the person that you are. It's like you not just I mean, five women win, but or Nicole would. Like in you know, him, yes. were both nominated. I was shocked they were nominated, and, frankly. You know, yeah, it was a two, not a very good movie, um, and in which they were not very good. But you come in, you come in with the, I'm Hemingway. I'm not just Clive Owen, right. but I am Hemingway. Right. So you get this kind of mojo that's, that's built into it. And I think, uh, especially in this kind of thing, it's like you look, so they're voting for, I mean, you are right, it's, it's sort of political. You're voting for your memory of this big political thing that's still in your head. Right. Um, but there is that kind of double thing that you can actually have a less good uh, movie and people get excited about because it. Because they already what have what emotional about. attachment Whereas to the nobody, subject. I mean, the, the Hatfields and McCoys did really well, but they have much more of an uphill struggle because it's like people don't have to remember. Well, I was really thrilled. I mean, I totally expected... Um, uh, the the actors to win, but I I was hoping I was really hoping that they would win the big category because I thought that that was such an ambitious show, and they pulled it off so well. I mean it's a little long, but they pulled it off really really well, and so yeah I know. And there's just I'm really hoping though that history will bring back the uh, the miniseries because that is that I, I miss I miss a good miniseries. And, I don't believe that American Horror Story is a miniseries. I believe no, it's a television and, uh, series. And, and I didn't believe Down Abbey was a miniseries last year. Turn into a miniseries. Oh, I know. Was that just because it got canceled? I think so. <laughs> One year. Yeah. It was a miniseries. Here's how you turn how lemons win? into lemonade. How can we win an award for that show. That we got canceled, so now we're a miniseries. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. I totally forgot to, about that. I meant to do that. That is weird. Yes, that is. Anyway, were the, were, 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 did anything surprise you in a good way? Uh, well, in a good way. I mean, I wasn't keeping, my feeling about awards is that most people that get them are good enough to deserve an award. So I don't get, yes. I never get heated up about who wins or who doesn't win. Oh, how could they? I mean, I think that's just, it's a game that people like to play, but it's silly. Um, so there was, are, you, are you talking about me and Stephen Colbert? It's like no, no, no. I'm just he really did deserve about, to win. I'm talking about the world. Of, <laughs> I understand. Of, you know, I thought Betty White was going to win because I thought, how I many more opportunities right. are they going to have to give Betty White an Emmy? But she didn't. Tom Barry on one. Yeah, that was a huge that was upset. A, that, was a, that, was a, that was like that the first surprise. upset of the evening. It yeah. was like because I really thought they were going to do that. But, I don't, you know. So I'm not looking at it that critically to see. Oh my, my gosh, how did that person win? John Cryer. I have to say, you mentioned him on the radio. That was like, that was I did turn my head and go, 
John Cryer. <laughs> and, Forgot uh, he was nominated. <laughs> yeah, and he apparently did as well. <laughs> that was actually probably the the best non scripted moment. I really, you know, they always get up there and they say, "Oh, I'm so surprised," and then they trot out like Claire Danes. I thought had the, you know, was like the most often rehearsed acceptance <laughs> speech. Bless her heart. But, you know, she's pregnant and your brain kind of goes, so it's good to have that nailed down. But he got, John Cryer got up there and he was like, there was a mistake. And, you know, it was really funny because because um, Kimmel kept saying he was going to pull off some big hoax in the middle of the show. Oh, and you thought that was <laughs> and the office were going, is this his hoax? Because that would be super mean. <laughs> but it would make sense. But no, it wasn't. That and wasn't not that I have anything against John Cryer. No, not at all. And he certainly has had a difficult couple of years. I just didn't see it coming. But, yeah. you know, I really don't, I, I, I'm not like a, a betting man on the mind of the electorate no. or anything like they're going to, no. you know. But it was kind of interesting with Homeland because every, I mean, across the board, nobody was mentioning them as even a possibility. Yeah, but it did have so much Even though I was hoping it. so hard. Yes. Yeah. So that, so that I think was really good. And it's good for, you know, to build that, that show's audience. But it is kind of shocking that Mad Men has never won a, uh, an acting award. It's odd. I assume that will be adjusted at some point. Odd, but I don't know that it's shocking. Well, one, I'll, I'll say this about Mad Men and acting awards. I think people don't understand the acting on Mad Men. I think people think John Hamm is not a good actor. I, I mean, I've heard this before, and I, I think people think, well, you don't like him, but I mean, but I think that's mixed up with the character, your feelings about the character. No, 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 no. I, I'm laughing. I, I mean, I see what you're saying because it is a very stylized, the, the, perform, the show is very stylized, and the performances are very buttoned down, right. although they're becoming less so as we move into the but 60s, not and the, I feel like... you know, Claire Danes. Right. They're not rolling know, around not getting a, electric shock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She got to do a lot of stuff in that. Right. And, and Damian Lewis there. got to, like, almost blow up the White House, so yes, yeah, it is... The, it is the opposite way. It is a mom, much more quiet and contained, it. yes. But, but it is stylized. I mean, like, with Jessica Perry, this... Here. Yes. People thought, I mean, they just read it like, oh, she's terrible. Like, you know, oh, she's I think she's tall. fabulous. And I agree. And, and I, I totally agree. think that she's injected like a breath of life into that show. I think this was the best season since the first season. And I think she's great, but I think people can mistake the acting on that show for not good acting in some odd way hmm. because it is so stylized. Uh, also, there's so Subtlety many, doesn't play well on there's television. There's so many people sharing the screen on that show. That, well, I think that that's it. I mean, it really is a true ensemble show, although he is a lead, but he does... Yeah. You know, he's not in every scene the way. He'll you know. probably get an Academy Award for like, you know, uh, when they make Mad Men or oh. something before he gets, not Academy Award. <laughs> I was like, how is that going to happen? Well, it's well that's possible, Academy. right? Um, you know, he'll get it for some other thing. When they do Mad Men the movie? Yeah, or, you know, that would they be make funny. fun of it on, you know, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Special yes. or something. Absolutely. He'll get a Comedy Award before he gets a straight drama. He looked sad. He looked sad when he didn't win because everybody thought this was going to be his year. That's why you can't listen to people. Right. But I was just sad because Hugh Laurie wasn't even nominated. That was when I was, you know, I was like, how is this? We never gave him an Emmy. So it just goes to show you. I think he's on tour, isn't he? He's still on his big music tour. I don't think he cares. I, you know what? I do want to go on record saying I was really very disappointed that Maggie Smith was not there because I totally wanted to see Maggie Smith give an acceptance speech, even if she did it like via whatever, you know, some sort of Skype situation. But I was like, you know, I we cannot get enough Maggie Smith, and I will totally get. I, I wanted that acceptance speech. So, come on, Maggie. Come on, she could come on the LA Times dot com. Yeah, she exactly. could totally come on LA Times dot com and give us her YouTube, acceptance speech. But that would be throwing away an opportunity. So. <laughs> a marketing opportunity. Much more <laughs> Anything else? You got any Let ideas? Let me think. Let me think. Uh, well, I did think when we when I was watching the in memoriam section, I was going. Hey, I wrote about that guy. Uh, Richard Dawson. Oh, yeah, I know. Wrote it was a bad guy. summer. Wrote about that guy. It was like the summer of death. Was like, Everybody was I like... I wrote about half the people that died. Wow. It felt like not all of them. The, not the... You know, I didn't write about the behind-the-camera people. Oh, the, yeah. Below the but I was... Side. I mean, I've forgotten about Richard Dawson. Who I, I know. It was very, very, very sad. But Richard yes. Dawson. You wrote about Phyllis Diller. I wrote about Phyllis Diller, yes. That was... But, uh, and we all wrote about Andy Griffith. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. I did notice that. I like seeing Ron Howard. I always like seeing Ron Howard. Yeah. Um, he's such a mensch. He is. He's, and he's just Ron Howard. Exactly. You know? American icon. So I like that. Uh, what else did I? Uh, 
thought. What about Lena Dunham not getting anything? Did you think she was going to get anything? No. Oh, really? Everybody but, seemed I mean, to think she again, was going to get I something. I don't think oh, right. that that's going to I thought she was going to get know. something. I really did. I thought she was going to get writing, so but I'm I was not, happy that Louis got it. I'm not surprised. So. Well, it's his, yeah, but I mean, Louis C.K., it's like his... I know. It's his... He's hilarious. Universe. He's very he, the, hilarious, he, he, but he's also like... Can you know, all, you know, his world right now. Yes, and doesn't... he? Yes, he operates by his own rules, and now he's getting... Praised by the mainstream. Right, so, so everybody's talking about it much more than they talked about girls, which is a weird Nietzsche show, which I think was, and I like it, but I think it was, you know, that's kind of the HBO effect, too, I think. Yeah, I want to see you know, what I was girls does next. And again, season. it's like I love Julia Louis Dreyfus. I was a little surprised that she won. For oh, me. I wasn't. I love, I, She's I, just I like, so fabulous. Everybody like, loves her so much. And I love Veep and I love her, but yeah. it's like. She's won now for every show that she's right, been well, on. That's probably I why mean, it is. You know, she's like, they didn't make a big deal out of that. Is that a record yet? I mean, three I for know. three? That's got to be some sort of record. Maybe. Um, anyway. But no, I was happy that she won, and I, uh, and I love her work. <laughs> Julie Louis Dreyfus, in case that. you're watching LA Times dot right now. It, but maybe somebody knows. We're big fans. She was at our Emmy roundtable. I interviewed her, and then she won an Emmy. See, it's, it's the McNamara bump. I'm, I'm telling you. Or the envelope bump. Maybe I should spread the marketing. There you go. The brand. Well, I think that's it. I think we've done the Emmys to death. Have a great day, and we'll see you next year. So long. Bye. Keep waiting. <laughs>